In this video we're going to discuss the normal curve or normal distribution, sometimes also called the bell curve and sometimes called the Gaussian distribution. So what are some characteristics of a normal distribution? Well first and foremost the height of the distribution on the uh, y-axis represents the relative frequency or probability of each possible score. So a higher, what's often called density, means that uh, that score is more possible or that range of scores is more possible, whereas a lower uh, density would indicate that the score is less probable or less likely to occur in, or occurs in less frequency in the distribution. A perfect, beautiful normal distribution is symmetrical and unimodal, meaning symmetrical meaning that um, each side is basically a mirror image of the other. And unimodal means it has one mode or one hump in the distribution. In a perfect, beautiful normal distribution, the mean, median, and mode are all identical. So the average score is also the 50th percentile, is also the most common score. Uh, with uh, most of the distributions that we'll use in this class, uh, it's nice to think about the total area under the curve as equaling 1, so that way we can divvy up proportions of the total area under the curve, and we'll be dealing with proportions of the area under the curve for the most part with every distribution we'll encounter in this course. Um, in theory, the tails are asymptotic, meaning that they go on forever getting closer and closer to the x-axis but don't quite touch the x-axis. And finally, uh, it's important to know that normal distribution is actually a family of distributions uh, that, that are defined by these characteristics and the spread of the distribution is determined by uh, the variance or the, or the standard deviation of a particular distribution. So here we have uh, a normal distribution of IQ scores with a mean of 100 and probably a standard deviation of 15 and we can see that most IQ scores fall within about 15 points of 100 plus or minus 15 and the further out we go the less probable or the less frequent given IQ scores are so to have like super high IQ or really low IQ is relatively unlikely, whereas to have an IQ that's somewhere near average is most probable. So we can see that the characteristics are illustrated to some extent here. We have a symmetrical and unimodal distribution. The mean and the median and the mode are likely very equal. Uh, it doesn't really do a good job of demonstrating the asymptotic nature of the tails, but again, that's more uh, in theory than in practice that that will occur. Uh, but for the most part, what we see here is a beautiful normal distribution. Uh, there's an equation that you can use to calculate what's called uh, the density of the distribution at a given point. And basically what you need to plug in the variables in this equation are the point, the score that you want the density for, the population mean, and the population standard deviation. Uh, it turns out, however, that this, knowing the density or height of a given score in a normal distribution isn't very useful. Instead, we're, we tend to be more concerned with intervals of scores. So uh, what's the probability of getting a score of 115 or less, or 115 or more, or between 85 and 100 or something like that? So to do that, um, you really need to apply calculus uh, to this equation to take the integral function. However, uh, for the most part, there are calculators online and tables in the back of textbooks that allow you to look up proportions of the area under the curve without having to apply calculus. Uh, related, somewhat related to the normal distribution is uh, the z-score. So a z-score is simply how many standard deviations apart a given score is from its mean. So a positive z-score would mean that a score is greater than its mean. A negative z-score would mean that a score 
is less than its mean, but it would also tell you how many standard deviation units a score is away from its mean. And this can be combined if, if we assume that a distribution is normal. We can look up the proportion of the area under the curve in what's called the standard normal distribution. And that's a normal distribution that has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. And we can determine, well, what's the probability of having a z-score of at this amount or less or this amount or higher by using the proportion of the area under the curve to determine that. So again, z-scores tell us the number of standard deviation units that a particular score is away from its population mean. So a z-score of negative 1.7 means that that score is 1.7 standard deviations below its population mean. A z-score of 2.5 means that that score is 2.5 standard deviations above its population mean. A z-score of 0 would mean that it is right on its population mean. A z-score of 2.1 would mean that it is two standard deviations above its population mean. So again, uh, usually we don't estimate uh, the probability of a particular score, but we're more interested in intervals of scores. So the probability that a person has an IQ of 140 or higher or 140 or lower, or the probability that a person has an IQ of 70 or lower. We'd be more interested in combining z-scores with what we know about the normal distribution, assuming we're dealing with a normal distribution, to determine uh, the probability of a score interval. Uh, the standard normal distribution follows what's called the empirical rule, sometimes also called the 68.95.99.7 rule. Doesn't exactly have a nice ring to it, but basically what this means is about 68% of cases will, in a normal distribution, in a variable that's normally distributed in its population, about 68% of cases will fall within plus or minus one standard deviation of the mean. About 95% of cases will fall within plus or minus two standard deviations of the mean. And in almost all cases, let's say 997 out of 1,000, if they're randomly sampled, will be likely to fall within three standard deviations, plus or minus, from its mean. Uh, that's a piece of art that I uh, created for you. It has no particular uh, importance in this lecture, but uh, it took me about 20 minutes of my life to create, so I put it in the slides nonetheless. So let's say we have a z-score. So, And you can look at a subsequent video for how to calculate z-scores um, and how to apply it to the normal distribution. But let's say we had a z-score, we calculated, we wanted to assume there was a normal distribution, and wanted to know, let's say, the percentile rank for that z-score. We could find a handy-dandy calculator on the internet, and this is one of my favorites, uh, and we'll leave this alone with the mean of 0 and the standard deviation of 1. By the way, this is linked in the resources uh, folder uh, in Blackboard. But we'll leave it at a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1 because we created z-scores, so we're looking at it in terms of the standard normal distribution with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. And let's say we had a z-score of, let's say, 1.3. We could ask this calculator to tell us what is the proportion of the area under the curve below a z-score of 1.3. And we see that that would be roughly equal to the 90th percentile rank. Uh, if instead we wanted to look, well, what's the percentile rank for negative 1.3? We would see that that's roughly um, in the 9th percentile rank. So we can, we can use the proportion of the area under the curve in z-scores, assuming there's a normal distribution, to look up uh, basically the probability and percentile rank of given score intervals. Uh, typically, we're interested in the proportion of the area under the curve that's below a given score interval, but we could ask for it above, we could ask between, we could also ask outside and it will give us uh, the proportion of the area under the curve that corresponds to the score interval or score ranges that we're interested in. Uh, and you can think of that in terms of 
the number, the likelihood of a, of a person being selected at random from that score interval. So the higher the proportion of the area under the curve, the higher probability that a score would be found within that range. The lower the proportion of the area under the curve, the lesser the probability that a score would be found within that range. Okay, thank you for listening to this brief lecture on the normal distribution and its application with z-scores. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did.